I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about she's acting like I never existed. So this happens a lot of times in a breakup or in a situation where maybe somebody isn't sure about how things are going and they're losing interest. It's important to understand that the more insecurities that we have and the more attachment issues you have, the more likely you're going to do things that make people lose attraction. Adult romantic relationships are very different from the relationships that we have with our caregivers, where you love your children no matter what. Unfortunately, we don't get that same kind of love with our partners. It's more conditional. If you don't treat your partner well, if you don't, if you start to neglect them, you're not there for them, or maybe uh, you're constantly manipulating them or making them feel like the relationship is toxic or unhealthy, they're gonna lose attraction. And what women tend to do in these situations is they don't want to make the guy feel like, you know, they still wanna repair things. Because in that moment, they're tied with their feelings and they feel like, you know, they don't want to continue or they're not sure and they don't want to lead you on. So biologically, you think about it, it's, you know, a safety behavior, right? It's a, like a safety mechanism to keep you at bay so you don't maybe escalate or get angry at them and blow up at them because you're feeling rejected. A lot of people, when they're rejected, become a different person. And they get so overwhelmed with their feelings and their emotions that they, you know, really escalate in a lot of ways. They can get angry, they can protest, they can get violent, they can do stalking behaviors, and that kind of thing scares people. This is why you have to work on your attachment issues. This is why I have the creative healing course and the knowledge workbooks. Because when you start to see these things and work through these things, you become a lot more naturally secure and confident. When you do that, when people, you know, their interest level drops or they challenge you or they test you or they do different things uh, in the relationship, you are able to pass those things and maintain attraction. So it's always important to get to a secure place. And many people don't do the work. Many people learn the hard way that they have to get broken up with a second or a third time. That, you know, while they're in no contact, all they're watching is no contact videos, you know? And you can see that with the videos that I put out. A lot of the videos with the real meat and potatoes to stuff that's trying to teach you how to be a good partner, how to make your partner feel loved, things of that nature, people don't watch those videos. But you have to. If you're really gonna turn it around with your ex and you really wanna show them that you're changing or that you're gonna change, you have to do that work because the reality is they left you or the relationship wasn't working. Why? The dynamic wasn't working. You know, in many cases, it, we have to take responsibility for ourselves and focus on growing because look, either they're gonna come back and you blow them away or someone else comes along and you blow them away. We have competition when we're dating, okay? You're gonna have competition. Think about it. You know, just because you like somebody doesn't mean they have to stay with you or they're gonna like you back. They're gonna look at all the options and they should, just like you should consider all your options when you're single, you know? You should consider who is gonna be the best fit for you. And so you need to show up and blow away your competition. And that is why many people are so happy after a breakup because they really do grow and they're like a different person. They feel like much stronger 
and more centered. So always make that your goal in a breakup and you can't go wrong. So today I've got an email coaching from a couple in their early 30s that were together for almost a year. He said, we broke up because of constant argument and attachment issues. And I can tell you those are going to go hand in hand, right? Oftentimes what you see is the anxious avoidant trap, which I've been talking about since I launched the channel many years ago. Okay. Now there's everybody's trying to talk about attachment theory, but be careful because many of these people have no kind of education or experience and they just make things up. And that's dangerous because they say some stuff, you know, they'll come to my channel, they'll take some stuff, act like they know what they're talking about, but then they mix it in there with other things because of their own personal issues. They get it confused and then they give bad advice. So be careful about that. Okay. Uh, please understand that Margaret had over 40 years as a therapist. She ran agencies. She worked in every kind of environment possible, the prison system, adoption, and me and Victoria, you know, learned from her for many, many years. Even, you know, I worked with her and learned from her for years before I launched the channel. So the stuff that I'm looking at incorporating with mental health and attachment theory, it kind of goes hand in hand. Okay. So let me go on here. Uh, shortly before we broke up, we were considering engagement. Okay. So this is another issue. A lot of times when the relationship is going through a major shift or a change, it becomes more unstable. Uh, I saw this personally recently where a couple was about to get engaged and right before the engagement, the woman decided to end it because she was no longer happy and she realized he wasn't the person. Now, had they not talked about getting engaged or marriage, it probably would have stayed status quo. But when you're thinking about escalating things, you really look at your partner a lot more closely and you should because now you're talking about a lifetime commitment. They said, I never felt I had so much in common as with this person. We had a similar sense of humor. We shared similar passions. Spending time together was so good and had a natural flow. She wrote me morning messages every day. We had lots of plans together. We even met each other's parents lived together for a while. She supported me and I supported her. Daily sweet messages were just, we were just soulmates, or at least I thought that way myself. A few weeks before we broke up, we had a few reoccurring arguments. Two months ago, we broke up for good. She started being more and more rude. So I had enough. I tried not to be so touchy anymore, but it didn't help. All right. So it feels like we got an avoidant woman losing attraction to this guy who probably was anxious. I'm just guessing. I don't have a lot of info on that yet. Started losing attraction, getting more rude to him. And he was getting touchy because anxious people tend to be more sensitive. And that was causing the reoccurring arguments. Maybe on some level she was keep she was starting arguments, so she was hoping it would break up. Hard to say, but something to consider. I perceived her anger as a violation of my boundaries, so I said I was fed up with all that stuff. The argument was very unpleasant because of the unfriendly, struggling vibes although neither of us used any offensive words about the other. Now I finally come to the point. I wrote to her once after that situation and let her know that I wanted to meet. She replied that she would never meet again and she wanted to move on. Okay. That's pretty intense. Think about it. They were talking about getting engaged. Only what a few weeks before they broke up, they start having a reoccurring argument and now she wants to end it. And she says she never wants to meet again. That's pretty ruthless. It doesn't add up because of the arguments they were having. Why would you not want to meet again? Just because of minor little arguments, you would think somebody healthier would be like, all right, 
I'm not sure we're gonna fix this or we can fix this or that I wanna fix this, but let's sit down and talk. So this makes me really wonder if she was sabotaging those arguments and starting them on purpose because something else was bothering her and she wasn't explaining it. I replied that I respected her decision, although I believe that there was a special bond between us. Kindly apologize for my mistakes and then I went no contact. No begging, no texting, no asking friends, no posting how unhappy I am. So he did good there, right? He handled himself well. I don't believe we would come together at all. I feel I must admit that. I guess he means that they won't get back together. But what completely breaks my heart is knowing she could just completely move on after our breakup. We are unfriended on social media, so I can't see her content. It's not open or public on her side. And it does hurt. When you feel like your ex doesn't even hurt or they don't care about you, that makes it feel so much worse. You want to at least feel like they're hurting too or that they miss you too. And when you don't, it just makes you feel like they never really cared. Through a friend, I know that she posts about what a great life she leads right now. But since I can't see it through my own account, it rules out the possibility that she wants to prove anything to me this way. All right, so you're thinking it's private, so she's not trying to post it just for you to see. Fair point. She's completely shut off, indifferent to me, as if I never existed. She doesn't play any indirect direct games with me via social media. She doesn't try to prove anything to me. She just doesn't care at all. Or I can't see any humble signs of her caring. Okay. Well, she might not care right now, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. If she was sabotaging things, and I get a feeling that she was. She feels free right now. She feels like, oh, good, you know, starting these passive aggressive arguments, got him to end the relationship. And now she feels like it was so easy to just end this with not a lot of uh, drama or making a big deal out of it. There wasn't a lot of fighting or arguing for a long period of time. So, just because she doesn't care or she acts like she doesn't care, it doesn't mean she won't feel it later or that she secretly doesn't care. It's so hard to accept that she immediately became so utterly indifferent to me. I know, it feels like that. You don't know what she's thinking when she lies her head on the pillow at night. You don't know what she's thinking about when she's daydreaming in the car or driving past a place you used to go together. You don't know that. You're, you're mind reading here and you're assuming that just because she's acting cold right now, it, that, that's how she's feeling 24 seven. That simply doesn't add up, okay? And even if she does post that she's super happy right now about life, think about it. Are you happy 24 seven? Do you have the same feelings and emotions all day long? Of course not. You may be feeling happy for a couple hours, then maybe you're just tired and grumpy or whatever. Just because she's posting here or there on social media, it doesn't mean a lot, okay? You gotta be careful with the mind reading. It seems so unnatural. I understand she stopped loving me for good. Now, how do you know that? Again, how do you know what's going to happen here? You don't know. People change their mind all the time. Exes come back all the time. Okay? Just don't, don't assume that because somebody feels some way right now that it's going to stay like that forever. If you have that mindset in a breakup, you're never going to turn things around. You're never going to focus on yourself. You're going to stay focused on what your ex is doing, where they're at, and you're not going to get motivated to change and grow. Okay? Most people are going to struggle with that. So don't have this mindset or attitude. She had probably been planning a breakup for some time because my attractiveness collapsed in her eyes. 
Now, this is kind of what I said up front, right? Where I was talking about the insecure behavior. And it is kind of lining up with what I just said with her starting the fights right before the breakup. So, yeah, it's kind of lining up with what I'm seeing here too, just slightly different. I understand that, but I can't contain the dissonance in my head. We had, in my opinion, an intense bond. And after the breakup, it became completely different. That's what happens. That's what happens in a breakup. And that's why most people don't think they're going to get their ex back because their ex becomes like this. But feelings change like the clouds that move across the sky. I've been saying that for years. You can even hear other people quote me now <laughs> on, their, on their channels. But I've been saying that for a long time, guys. She doesn't care at all. Again, you don't know that. You don't know that. Maybe she doesn't care. I can't say that you're completely wrong, but just because she's acting like this right now doesn't mean that's how she feels all the time. She doesn't try to show or prove anything to me. She just went on with her life as nothing had happened. And two months have already passed. Okay, two months is nothing in a breakup. I hate to tell you, but honestly, two months is really not a big deal. Takes time for people to go through the different stages and the phases that we talk about, okay? Um, and Margaret and I have a really, really good in-depth video that's on the channel. Actually, we had initially filmed that one just for the Creative Healing course, uh, but I thought it would be good to put that out there for everybody. I'm convinced that it's over. She's done with me for good. You've convinced yourself of that, okay? <laughs> Many people convince themselves of that. But I have a new success story that I haven't talked about recently. Um, and I've talked about this guy here and there in other videos. But we've been working together for close to a year. And he was absolutely convinced that she was never going to come back. Um, he kept doubting me. He kept doubting the, the things that I was saying. Uh, he asked me a few, for a few predictions. I nailed it right on the money. Uh, maybe I'll post a screenshot of that on like my Instagram or, my, uh, or on one of the posts so you could see. But he was shocked because I predicted some things right on the money. And as of earlier this week, I think uh, earlier this week, it was he messaged me that they're now dating again. So he was absolutely convinced, just like this guy, that their ex wasn't coming back and now they're dating. So don't convince yourself of these things. Just focus on the personal growth. If they don't come back, you're still going to be in a great place. If they do, you'll, you'll be able to blow them away. This causes a painful cognitive dissonance for me. She doesn't even have the slightest bit of attachment there. Again, you don't know that. All of these things that you're saying to me, there is no information that is saying that this is accurate. Yes, you have some clues as to how she's behaving on social media, but you should see how people act on social media in an effort to make their ex look one way or think one thing when it's not even true. But even if she's not posting about you or for you, you don't know that she doesn't have an attachment to you. You don't know what's going on with her. Stop mind reading people. Trust me, your ex is going through a lot more than you realize and understand. Just because they're exhibiting certain behavior doesn't mean they're feeling all of those things or they're not feeling more complicated layer, layered feelings that they're not going to tell you about or show you. He says, not even a minimum, any curiosity if I change, no such emotions, so much Nothing. This is only two months in. Okay? Guys, many of you are not going to hear from your ex in two months. Most of you won't. That whole 30-day no contact thing is absolutely ridiculous. Okay? I've been doing this for a very long time. Most exes, I think, will not reach out for at least three months. Okay? At least. That's the time that people need for the energy to not be as charged, for people to be so hurt and so angry. 
and for them to come back. So two months is absolutely nothing. Now, I know it feels that way. Believe me, I've been there. But when it comes to coaching you guys along, two months is nothing. The guy I just talked about a minute ago, they broke up last year. It was literally about one or two weeks short of a year that they broke up. And now he's dating his ex again. Okay. All right. He says, how can I heal that pain and learn from mistakes? Well, you got to work on your attachment issues and you really need to look at your thoughts here because you're trying to do a lot of mind reading. You're assuming things about another person when you barely have any information. You're just going off a little bit of social media posting that you assume that you know how she's feeling 24 seven about you and your relationship. I just think that you're setting yourself up for failure when you do this. Is it possible she doesn't care anymore? Sure, it's possible, but it's probably more probable that right now she doesn't care. Right now she's in that relief stage where we talk about separation elation. And that's in the video I mentioned with Margaret about stages of a breakup. Um, and by the way, be very, like I said, please be very careful on what other people say about stages of the breakup. I've seen a lot of bad information out there and I assure you that nothing that I put on this channel is not something that I would not personally do in situations to reattract an ex or when I'm trying to understand these things. Okay, guys? Um, so be careful because I hate to see a lot of people get bad advice. They do clean slate messages. Today I did an email coaching. Uh, somebody did a handwritten letter. That didn't go well. Uh, good reminder text, all those things are just, honestly, they're weaker behaviors and they usually make situations work worse in a breakup. If I thought they would work, I'd tell you to do them. I tell you not to do them because I see time and time again that it usually makes things worse. But you gotta heal on your, your attachment issues. That's what the creative healing course is for. It's massive. And it includes, right now I have a promotion where it includes the workbooks for free inside. Uh, and the workbooks alone, that's 94, 97 videos. So there's a tremendous amount of information. And it's all about doing the work. It's not this fluff nonsense, like 30 days of no contact. No, if you see the stuff that's in there, the homework activities, uh, the art therapy activities, the cartoons with reflective questions, the exclusive videos, all those things, there's a thing, one thing is called story of your life. That's 40 pages broken down into uh, four sections. Uh, and that was a huge thing that M Margaret really wanted us to do. When you do all these things and you're in therapy and you're really processing and growing, that is how you heal and how you grow and become a better partner. Because no matter who you date, they're going to have attachment issues. Okay. And the better off you are within yourself, more centered you are within yourself, the more likely you're going to be able to navigate the complexities of dealing with another person who probably feels the exact opposite of you in many ways. Because if you're more anxious, you're probably going to be attracted to someone more avoidant. And if you're more avoidant, you're going to be more likely to be attracted to somebody who's more anxious. That's the way it goes. But ideally you get to a place where you're secure and you become more secure and you are attracted to people who are more secure. Okay. So go look in my understanding attachment styles playlist. All of those videos are really focused on healing attachment issues. Uh, I can't even tell you how many are in there at this point. I don't even know. Uh, or the be a master in relationships playlist where it's teaching you a lot of skills to be a better partner. Okay. So, Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and it really was enlightening on stop trying to mind read so much on what's going on with your ex because it's often a lot different than you realize it is. Okay. If you want to get my help personally, you can do it on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You can get my creative healing course or, or the workbooks there, but that's it for this video. I'm coach Craig Kenneth and I will talk with you soon.